If you've been camping, caravanning and adventuring for as long as I have, you'd be well acquainted with the concept of the old camper trailer or the teardrop camper. Well, hang with me for the next few minutes and see how these two concepts have matured over the last 50 years. Okay, what exactly is a hybrid expedition trailer? Well, it can take many forms as you see in these photos. Some are like this one, a derivative of the original teardrop camper, just beefed up for off-road use. Others are um, serious, serious expedition, get yourself across a continent by any means trailers. Um, they can have amazing airbag suspension, they could have uh, twin shock absorber, swing trailing arm suspension. Uh, most of them are fitted with uh, enough water and food carrying capacity to look after the occupants for around four days minimum. Many of them have dedicated storage cupboards for sporting equipment and bike uh, racks for bikes, kayaks, surfboards, whatever takes people's fancy on the roof. There are uh, three different types of expedition trailer. There's your flat trailer with a rooftop tent that folds out and most of the services and, and storage are in cupboards around the perimeter of the trailer. Then there's the teardrop camper style where you have a nice pod which is completely weatherproof and often climate controlled for sleeping in. And then once again your kitchen is a hatch on the back and uh, you may have other storage and cupboards along the outside. Then there's the hybrid. Now the hybrid is a mixture of the two. It doesn't have a tent, but it does have a canvas content. And that canvas content is usually um, a fold-out flap or a fold-up lid to give more headroom. Um, that And the side walls are of soft canvas. So there's many levels from serious expedition across a continent down to soft roaders, something that somebody who's into a little bit of mountain biking or trout fishing might consider buying for a couple of days in the wilderness, but not seriously out in the middle of the boondocks. What I'm going to be building is something that uh, will be capable of the serious off-roading. It will be strong. It will have uh, the best suspension that I can fit on the budget I've got. I've got some real tricks up my sleeve that I can't wait to show you for um, building your own very inexpensive off-road suspension. And it's going to have a few netty little features that I just want to try out. It's basically going to be a test bed for future ideas. And it will morph from one thing to another. I'll be improving. I'll be taking things out and fitting new things in as uh, I test them, see what works best for what I do and the places I go. And just generally giving myself a wee bit of a treat. I spend a lot of time helping other people and working on other people's projects. And I'm looking forward to doing something that this time is just for me. Antics like this require some pretty specialist hardware. These high articulation couplings, they're not actually legal in New Zealand for use on the road. So um, I won't be able to just buy one of these and fit it and use it legally but I've found a coupling that a company that I deal with on a regular basis called Trail Equip have got that I can fudge a little extra um, angle into. And it won't be as good as the real McCoy, but it's a poor man's version, 
and it remains legal for New Zealand use. So I'm going to include it and there'll be lots of stuff like that where I've found that I can achieve great things using a minimum of resources and that's that's what it's all about here at uh, Tiny House and Off Grid Resources. It's making the very best out of what you've got at hand. So let's get together for the next few videos. Um, I'm going to be working on this fairly hard and getting things done on a weekly basis. There will be a video each week that documents the build and the modifications and the improvements to this amazing expedition camping trailer that I'm going to be building here at Tiny House and Off Grid Resources.